to order. This is the Planning Commission meeting on uh, July 23rd, 2020 at 6.30. And um, before we begin here, uh, I want to go ahead and, and um, read some opening uh, remarks here. Um, I'd like to state for the record that this is meeting is being uh, conducted by teleconference, pursuant to the Brown Act waivers uh, provided for under the, the governor's executive order in response to the COVID-19 state of emergency. Uh, during the public emergency, city halls close the public. The agenda states that the public may view the meeting that is being live streamed online and on, on, on ETV channel 27 and provide comment by submitting an online comment form, which will be read into the record by staff. Um, the comment form can be assessed by going onto our main city of Emeryville website at emeryville.org and then navigating to the planning commission page. Uh, once there, you'll see a link uh, entitled Submit an Online Speaker Card. Uh, the public also has the option of participating in tonight's meeting via Zoom and may provide uh, public comment during the meeting using the raise your hand feature visible on your screen. Or if you're calling in, press star nine. Uh, the Zoom call-in feature was provided on the posted agenda and there's a link on the Planning Commission agenda as well. Um, so that said, um, at this point, um, we can we have a, a roll call, uh, Charlie? Certainly. Uh, Commissioner Chafe? Present. Commissioner Keller? Here. Commissioner Mendez? Here. Commissioner Sohani? Here. Commissioner Young? Here. Vice Chair Thompson? Here. And Chair Guerrero? Here. All seven commissioners are present. Thanks, Charlie. Um, we have a, um, a rather short agenda today, but some really fun, exciting things happening. Um, and so uh, we'll move on to uh, commission matters, uh, item 3.1 on the agenda, which is our swearing in of our new commissioner, uh, Zoe Chafe. Welcome, Commissioner Chafe. Uh, typically I would have you stand, but since we're kind of tied to our computers, we can do it seated, but I'd like you to raise your right hand and repeat after me, please. I state your name. I, Zoe Chafe. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic and that I bear true faith and allegiance, and that I bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. As a planning commissioner for the city of Emeryville. As a planning commissioner for the city of Emeryville. Great, congratulations. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome to the commission. Uh, crowd noise like they have at the baseball games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome, Commissioner uh, Chafe. Um, it's great to have you on board with us, and I'm looking forward to working with you. Um, you're, um, if you have anything that you'd like to, um, to say to the, the commission, uh, you're welcome to, to say anything at this point. Thank you. I'm really pleased to be on the commission and really looking forward to meeting and um, eventually and working with all of you. Um, I think it's a really exciting time for Emeryville. We have so much potential in the city and a lot of exciting projects, a lot of exciting changes, and um, I don't take this responsibility lightly. So thanks very much for inviting me in. Welcome. All right. Um, are there any um, commissioners I'd like to um, address our new commissioner at this point? Anything that you'd like to say? I'll just say welcome, Zoe. Just so welcome, glad to have you. Good to hear. Good to see you here. Zoe, good, really nice to see you around. Thanks. 
Same here, Thank Zoe. You. Welcome, and um, looking forward to meeting you in person one day. Thank you all. All right. Um, all right. So we'll continue on. Uh, we have the uh, item 3.2, uh, which is our recognition of an outgoing commissioner. And this is uh, Commissioner Gail Th uh, Donaldson. Um, Char Charlie? Oh, yeah. Would you like me to take this? Yes. Uh, can you um, share the, um, the resolution that we um, created for Commissioner Donaldson? I certainly will. And I hope you can hear me OK. My internet connection seems to be a little spotty. Um, this is a uh, Planning Commission Resolution number GD20-01, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Emeryville, expressing the Commission's sincere appreciation to Gail Donaldson for over 14 years of service on the Emeryville Planning Commission. And I want to say that this was a group effort. All of you contributed uh, portions of this resolution, and I will read it now. Whereas on January 17th, 2006, the city council appointed Gail Donaldson to the Emeryville Planning Commission to fill the unexpected vacancy due to the resignation of the gazella Chris Owens, whose term was due to expire on June 30th, 2008. The council subsequently reappointed Gail to the commission for three year terms on July 15th, 2008, July 19th, 2011, June 3rd, 2014, and June 20th, 2017, and whereas Gail's final term expired on June 30th, 2020, for a total tenure on the commission of 14 years, five months, and 13 days, and whereas Gail served as vice chair of the commission from August 2006 to July 2008, uh, having uh, been reelected in July 2007, and as chair of the commission three times, from July 2008 to July 2009, from July 2011 to August 2012, and from July 2017 to August 2018. And whereas from August 2006 until its last meeting in November of 2012, Gail represented the Planning Commission on the General Plan and Zoning Update Steering Committee, playing a critical role in the extensive deliberations on and eventual adoption of a new general plan and new planning regulations, and whereas Gail represented the Planning Commission on the Ad Hoc Committee that de developed the Parks and Recreation Plan, which was adopted by the City Council in Europe, and whereas Gail represented the Planning Commission on the Parks and Recreation Committee until June of 2020, when the City Council reappointed her to the committee as a community representative, and whereas during Gail's tenure on the commission, a number of major development projects were approved by the commission or city council, and a number of long range planning efforts were recommended for approval by the commission and adopted by the city council, both too numerous to list by name. And Gail played an active role in the deliberations on all of these projects. And whereas both in both her professional career as a land as architect and in her passion for quality of life issues generally and for parks and open space design specifically, which has served the commission well during her long tenure in public service. And whereas Gail's deep and wide knowledge of Emeryville codes and regulations and expertise in the field of landscape architecture will be sorely missed. And whereas her willingness to provide carpooling solutions for a planning commissioner who often needed a ride home when meetings ran late was always greatly appreciated and where I'm sure some of you know what that's talking about. And whereas Gail's dedication to walking all project sites and attention to detail demonstrated an inspiring level of commitment to public service. And whereas Gail's infinite knowledge of landscape design and flora assisted her fellow commissioners and ultimately the city of Emeryville as a whole in guiding the development of public parks, POPOS, which stands for uh, privately owned public open space, and all manner of landscaped open space while carrying that same passion to a greater extent to building design and finishes. And all of these items affected not only the finished project, but improved benefit and benefited and enhanced our city as a whole. This along with her concern and caring for the outcomes for families and the children of Emeryville made Gail a well-rounded and compassionate commissioner and person. And whereas Gail's thoughtful and humane approach towards design and planning 
and her insightful input on multiple complete street mixed use development and landscape projects made her an incredibly valuable asset in defining the future of Emeryville. And whereas it is the citizens of Emeryville that will miss her equally as much as the planning commission and with all that she has outlined for the city, hopefully make this part of the world a universal cohabitation and whereas she has carried the torch well, Gail, remind, Gail Donaldson reminds me of a quote from Edward T. McMahon, quote, growth is inevitable and desirable, but destruction of community character is not. The question is not whether your part of the world is going to change, the question is how. And whereas Gail brings her valuable and extensive knowledge about planning and especially open space design to all discussions in which she is involved, is skilled at finding proactive ways to move ideas and discussions forward, and is above all a friendly, collaborative colleague who clearly cares about the Emeryville community and its future. And whereas Gail's thoughtful and insightful comments and wisdom on a variety of long range and current planning issues will be greatly missed on the Planning Commission. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Planning Commission hereby expresses its sincere appreciation to Gail Donaldson for over 14 years of outstanding service to the city of Emeryville and its citizens and wishes her the best of luck in all of her future endeavors. Approved by the Planning Commission of the city of Emeryville at a regular meeting held on Thursday, July 23rd, 2020. And at this point, I would like to present Gail with a framed uh, copy of this resolution that she can display proudly so <laughs> very nice <laughs> there you can read the whole thing <laughs> thank you so much that was really this is overwhelming i really <laughs> what it's two pages long <laughs> oh my um thank you all for your kind words it's really much appreciated um i got involved in the planning commission early in the 2000s when there was still a train running down doyle street and along where the greenway is now and there was a warehouse across the street from me where the doyle hollis park is now and the warehouse was going to go out of business or was moving and the city bought the land and was concerned about as they are now parking in emeryville and decided that the best thing for that site was a big parking structure and a bunch of us in the neighborhood got together and we formed the doyle street neighbors we advocated we went to planning commission meetings and city council meetings and said no we don't need a big parking structure right here we need a park and you know fast forward we have a really lovely well-used park there now and basically i was hooked i thought this is a really good thing to be able to do to influence the way the city is growing what the spaces are used for and all that so like i said at the last meeting it's been a really rewarding and sometimes challenging um, 14 plus years there's been a huge amount of change in the city and um I'm just really grateful to have had served with a real a number of very dedicated, smart and thoughtful people who really care about the quality of life in Emeryville. We didn't always agree, but we always had the best interest in the, of the city in mind, whichever, however we conceived that. So I'm going to miss the participation at the planning commission level, but I'm going to be around. I'm not going anywhere. Still do the park and rec committee. And I hope we can all keep taking actions that keep Emeryville moving forward as an equitable, diverse, sustainable place that prioritizes its public spaces and its quality of life and is a place that we want to continue to live for a good long time. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Um, you summed it up so nicely. I mean, you're leaving a legacy here. Um, and to, to say that um, we have big shoes to fill is an understatement, right? And so um, I'm really looking forward to um, hearing more from you as a resident and continuing that kind that relationship. And I'm really excited for you to enjoy retirement. Um, it's well-deserved. And just by looking around, I can see the change that you've created here. And so uh, I really uh, admire the work that you've done along the years and look forward to see um, how you're enjoying retirement over the years. Uh, so congratulations. And um, I'm going to miss you. 
<laughs> well, um, I'm not going to be that far. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, I'll open up the floor for any um, any commissioners that would like to uh, address uh, Commissioner Donaldson. Can always say I'd like to. Um, <laughs> I'd like to say something. I I was not as fortunate as some of the other planning commissioners to serve on the planning commission um as long with you side by side um i wish i i i did serve with you a little bit longer because i've heard so many great things about you and not only from people on the planning commission but also um employees in the city and residents that have said so many great things about you and um, i just want to give you a warning that i might be reaching out to you to kind of connect and just get a little bit of uh, tips and tricks uh, from you. So I'm really looking forward to connecting with you as a resident. I look forward to staying in touch with all of you. And thank you, Erica. I, I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to meet more closely as well, but we will. So yeah. we all just like to say, I won't know what a commission is like without you. You've been here ever since I've been here and I'm in my third term. and. So you are kind of the the grand dame of the of the commission, and you always had such a great diverse um, viewpoints of things. Uh, you helped steer me in the right directions many times. So your wisdom and your hard work is going to be missed, and I appreciate all the time and effort that you put into us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, and again, I just wanted to say thank you again, and and it has been a pleasure. Good serving with you too. Got a good group there. Gonna keep the city on the right track, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Um, if there are no further comments uh, for Commissioner Donaldson, uh, congratulations. And we'll see you on the other side, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're gonna move on to item 3.3. This is our election of officers that happens um, every year. Um, so at this point, um, we can, sorry, when we do this, are we, should we start with the nomination of the chair or the vice chair? You can do whatever you like. Um, the commission has done it different ways over the years. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, uh, somebody nominates both positions at once and you mm -hmm. both vote on both, or you can do the vice chair first or the chair first, however you, however you like. You got it. All right. Well, I'd like to begin by nominating uh, Vice Chair Thompson to be the chair. I'd second that. If there's no further right. motion. <laughs> Great. So uh, we have a uh, second from Commissioner Kelly. Okay. And um, no. is there, we can move forward with the nomination for the um, vice chair, if there, unless there are other nominations for chair uh, from other commissioners. All right, seeing none, do I have any uh, nominations um, for the vice chair position? Commissioner uh, Jiang, I think that you're on mute, but it looks like you're um, you're making a nomination there. You need to unmute, unmute yourself, yourself, Commissioner Young. You're muted. <laughs> you're, you're on mute, Commissioner Young. See, there I was trying go. to be a I was trying to be a good Zoom person to uh, keep down the bandwidth. Wow. Okay. Um, I nominate myself for vice chair. Someone wants to second. All right. We have a nomination for. Um, Commissioner Young for vice chair. Do we have a second? I would second him. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do we have any other, any further nominations for vice chair? All right. Shall so we vote? All right. It sounds like these are non-contested. So we're going to vote and move forward with the, uh, the vote. Charlie, can we have a roll call? All right. Vote. All right, we have Commissioner Thompson for chair and Commissioner Young for vice chair. Uh, Commissioner Chafe? Aye. 
Commissioner Keller? Aye. Commissioner Mendez? Aye. Commissioner Sohani? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. Vice Chair Thompson? Aye. And Chair Guerrero? Aye. So congratulations to Chair Thompson and Vice Chair Young. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. much. Congratulations. Thank you for your support. Wow. <laughs> okay. um, All right. Uh, so at this point, uh, we have a new chair. Um, and so um, I'd like to pass the gavel to uh, uh, Commissioner Thompson now at this point uh, and congratulate Vice Chair uh, uh, Young. And I'm going to step back now and let you run the meeting, Commissioner Thompson. Uh, I wondered if that was what was going to happen. So, so thank you, Commissioner Guerrero. <laughs> um, no, thank you for serving yourself. Um, you know, I look forward to trying to wrangle, uh, you know, the, the uh, meeting. I, I know it takes a little bit more work than being vice chair. Um, and so I really appreciate the work that you've put in. Um, and, uh, and please uh, excuse my messing up of people's names because the Commissioner Young, Commissioner Mendez, um, that, that system of, of uh, naming people, I'll have to, have to get really practiced at. Um, but, uh, but let's keep moving with the agenda. Um, so we've gone through the election of officers um, and now we are on to nomination of the representative to Parks and Recreation Committee. And I don't know, is there a preset nomination? Uh, can I make a few remarks, uh, Chair Thompson? Sure. Okay. Uh, as I as as you heard in the resolution for Commissioner Donaldson, she served as the representative to the plan to, to the committee, uh, Re Parks and Recreation Committee from the Planning Commission uh, for the entire uh, life of that committee to date. Um, the Parks and Recreation Committee uh, has a designated designated position on it as a, for a representative from the Planning Commission. Needless to say, uh, Commissioner Donaldson can no longer be in that role since she's no longer on the commission. Uh, however, as was noted, she was reappointed to the committee by the City Council as a uh, rep as a resident. So she is still on the Parks and Recreation Committee. Um, I would like to also note that Commissioner Chafe is a member of the Parks and Recreation Committee. So you could nominate her to be your representative to the committee, which would then free up a position on the committee for uh, a resident to be uh, appointed. Alternatively, you could nominate another commissioner uh, to be your representative on the committee, which would then give, have, you effectively would have two people at the committee, one who is your official representative and the other who was on the commission and a resident representative. Uh, and that would then not open up a new seat on the Parks and Recreation Committee. So it's totally up to you as to how you would like to handle that. Okay. I think the first question would be, uh, Commissioner Chafe, are you interested in being on the committee again as the a planning board representative? So thank you. Um, my preference at this point would be to remain as a resident on the committee. And um, I have a nomination that I'd like to make when appropriate. Okay. Um, so I'd like to nominate Commissioner Guerrero. I would second that. Thank you. Okay. And I'm sorry, who is the second? Chair Thompson? Yes. All right. Are there any other nominations? No? All right. Should, are you ready for roll call? Yep. Go ahead. All right. Commissioner Chafe? Aye. Commissioner Keller? Aye. Commissioner Mendez? Aye. Commissioner Sohani? Aye. Commissioner Young? Aye. Oops, sorry, I'm still using the old list. Uh, Commissioner Guerrero? <laughs> Aye. And Chair Thompson? Aye. All right, uh, seven eyes. Congratulations, Commissioner Guerrero. You are now the official, well, I shouldn't say it. You are the nominee to be the uh, representative from the Planning Commission. It is the City Council who will ultimately make that appointment. Thank you, Charlie. And thank you for the nomination, uh, Commissioner Chafe. Look forward to serving you with you, pending uh, approval. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I think it's unlikely that the City Council would not approve that. 
Okay, well, um, at this point, I'd like to move on to public comment. And I, I believe, Charlie, this is things that are not on the agenda. Right. Oh, and you know, I don't know if you have the canned speech for that. Uh, I don't. <laughs> you have it. Miguel, would you mind reading that? Uh, <laughs> you got it. I just pull it up here. Um, all right. So uh, now's the time for public comment. Um, this portion of, uh, for the, this portion of the meeting, anyone who wishes to make comments related to items not on the, on the agenda should um, have begun submitting uh, your online speaker card by now. Uh, three minutes will be allowed for the city clerk to read your comments into the record. Uh, if you're participating in tonight's meeting via Zoom, uh, please use the raise your hand feature uh, <coughs> visible on your screen. Or if you're calling in, press star nine and the clerk will call you at the appropriate time. At this time, I wanna check in with our city clerk um, and whether any comments have been uh, received via the online comment card or if anyone's raised their hand to make an audio comment. I see no online comment cards, nor any uh, raised hands. Sherry, sure, you get your muted. Muted. Mm -hmm. I think she's looking. There you Stay. go. I don't see any online comment cards or any raised hands at this time. And I okay. do not. I do not either. Great. And I do want to make a note that um, at this point in the meeting, um, the uh, study session that was scheduled for this evening has been canceled and uh, postponed to another uh, meeting in the future for September. And so uh, if there are any members of the public that would like to speak on behalf of that item, right now is a, a good time for that as well. Still no raised hands. Okay. And I... I'm supposed to get an email if anybody submits a speaker card, and I do not have any such email. Great. We'll give it a few seconds here. Okay. We only have two, three attendees, and they're all staff, so I doubt that they'll have. <laughs> oh, I couldn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think that we can move on then. Uh, so here, no additional requests to make comments. The public uh, comment portion of this meeting is now closed. Um, and... Uh, we can move forward with the remainder of the agenda. Okay. Um, so I'll move forward uh, with the approval of the action minutes of June 25th, 2020. Um, and I don't know, Charlie, can you review the voting availability? Was there anyone absent last? Uh, good point. You know, Commissioner Sahani was absent at the uh, June 25th meeting, so he would need to abstain. Okay. Is anyone ready to uh, nominate approval? A nominee approval. I second that. All right. And I know the city clerk likes us to take a roll call vote on this. So if you're ready, we can do that. Can I ask one question before we do that? Um, will we still have quorum if I abstain as well? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because I wasn't present for the meeting. That's right. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes. Um, let me see. I'll try to do it right this time. Uh, okay, Commissioner Chafe has abstained. Uh, Commissioner Guerrero. Aye. The okay, Commissioner Keller. Aye. Commissioner Mendez. Aye. Commissioner Sohani is also abstained. Uh, Commissioner, wait a minute. Am I missing somebody? Me. Vice, Young, Vice, Chair, Vice Chair Young. Vice Chair Young. Aye. And Chair Thompson. Aye. I didn't miss anybody, did I? No. Okay, good. We have five <laughs> ayes and two abstentions. Fantastic. Um, so the next item on the agenda is the Community Development Director's Report. Charlie, do you have some news for us? Yes, I do a little bit. Thank you, Chair Thompson. Um, first, with regard to recent city council actions, the city council has met twice since your last meeting, and that was on July 7th and July 21st. At the July 7th meeting, the council adopted the housing affordability table pursuant to the affordable housing program. This table sets the maximum monthly rent or purchase price for below market rate housing in Emeryville based on household size and income level. They adopt this table every year, and it's at the maximum that... Uh, BMR um, that can be charged for BMR units in Emeryville. 
Uh, the council unanimously approved the second reading of an ordinance amending the planning regulations to set bird safe building standards, which was first read uh, at the June 16th council meeting. As you may recall, the commission recommended approval of these amendments at your April 23rd meeting. And this ordinance will take effect uh, 30 days after its second reading, which will be on August 6th. The council passed the second reading of a regular ordinance that had been introduced on June 16th to expedite the approval process and eliminate fees for outdoor dining for restaurants and bars. Uh, this ordinance waives or modifies certain provisions uh, for the procedures for temporary use permits, sidewalk cafes and parklets. The ordinance will take effect on August 6th. And as I previously reported uh, at the last meeting, the council also passed a companion urgency ordinance on June 16th, which took effect immediately and under which we have already approved a number of applications for outdoor dining, which you may have seen around the city. Um, and the council considered the scope of work for a new pedestrian and bicycle plan, which the commission had reviewed uh, and commented on at your last meeting on June 25th. The council was informed of the commission's comments and they approved including them in the scope. Uh, the council also reiterated the need to include a review of the implementation of the current pedestrian and bicycle plan in the scope. On July 21st, uh, just the day before yesterday, in the afternoon prior to their regular meeting, the council held a special study session on policing policy and developed a priority list of action items for future council consideration. The council approved an exclusive right to negotiate at the regular meeting uh, in the evening. They approved an exclusive right to negotiate agreement with EAH housing for a 67 unit intergenerational affordable housing project on the former city recreation center site at 4300 San Pablo Avenue, which currently serves as a temporary emergency family shelter. The project would be affordable to extremely low income and low income households and would serve both seniors and former foster transition age youth. The design is for modular construction with a podium made from mass timber rather than concrete and features an innovative stacked parking concept that can be converted to additional housing units in the future if parking is no longer needed. This project will be coming forward in the future for planning entitlements. Mm -hmm. Um, the council approved guidelines for the city's below market rate residential program. And the council also approved three urgency ordinance ordinances related to uh, mitigating uh, tenant protection ordinances to mitigate impacts from COVID-19. These three ordinances concerned one, the temporary moratoria on residential evictions, commercial evictions due to non-payment of rent, and residential evictions by homeowners associations. Uh, the second one was requiring landlords to provide a repayment plan for rent in arrears to residential tenants impacted by the COVID-19 emergency. And the third one required landlords to provide a repayment plan for rent in arrears to commercial food establishments impacted by the COVID-19 emergency. The council had previously passed uh, similar ordinances but they expired on June 30th based on the governor's executive order uh, that they were based on. Uh, the governor's orders was since extended to September 30th. So these new ordinances would likewise end on September 30th, but unlike the previous ordinances, these are tied to the governor's order. So that if the end date of the governor's order is subsequently extended, these ordinances will likewise be automatically extended without the need for any further action by the city council. Finally, on July 21st, the council considered putting a measure on the November ballot, uh, ballot for the voters to decide whether to impose a tax on transportation network companies or TNCs, uh, that is to say Uber and Lyft, at a rate of 50 cents for private trips and 25 cents for pooled trip. But after extensive deliberation, the council decided not to place the measure on the ballot because the amount of revenue that's anticipated to be generated by such a tax would not be sufficient to pay for the implementation of the measure. So it wouldn't make any money for this. Didn't decided not to do it. And in other news um, concerning the pet bike plan scope of work that you all reviewed at your last meeting, uh, we issued an RFP based on that scope of work for a new pedestrian bicycle plan um, yesterday, uh, now to be called the act 
adaptive transportation plan based on your suggestions. We sent that RFP to five consultants and proposals are due on September 3rd. Also, uh, another RFP for objective standards. On June 4th, we issued a request for proposals for development of objective standards to be used in required ministerial approval of residential projects under SB 35 and other state laws. That's uh, similar to the process that we're going through for the RCD 3600 San Pablo Avenue project. We received four proposals by the due date of July 10th, and we selected one consultant for negotiation of a contract, which will be presented to the city council for approval in September. This effort is being funded by an SB2 planning grant from the State Department of Housing and Community Development. And then finally, I know there's been a lot of uh, interest and um, questions about the ANI project and what is the status of that. So I'm going to tell you now what the status of that is. Uh, yesterday, I sent a letter to the ANI group informing them that I have deemed their application to be withdrawn because they have fallen out of contract with the owner of the property and they no longer have the owner's permission to develop a project on that site. This determination is appealable to the planning commission within 15 days, that is by uh, Thursday, August 6th. So if it is appealed, then of course it will come to you for ultimate decision. But if no appeal is filed by August 6th, then my determination that this application is deemed withdrawn will be final. And that concludes my report. I'd be happy to respond to any questions. Thank you, Charlie. Are there any questions at this time? Commissioner Keller? Yeah, I was just wondering if it's appropriate time just to ask Charlie, have we gone out to bid or are up here, I think for the 40th street, the uh, two-way cycle track and the bus lanes and that whole project from the bridge to the border? We, uh, we are uh, considering applying for a grant from MTC to fund that. Uh, and what that would do is it would, if, if we were successful in getting that grant, it would fund the design of the project uh, for construction. And then after that was done, it would be go out to bid for building it. Okay. So what's the um, grant deadline? It's uh, September. Okay. So we have this on the council agenda, I believe for September 1st to approve the grant application. All right, great, thanks. Are there any other uh, questions, comments? Okay, great, thank you very much. Um, moving on the agenda, um, the disclosure of conflicts of interest and ex parte communications. Um, I can start to just to note that I did meet with BMR Realty, um, the, the developers or the applicants for the um, for the PUD, um, and I'm not going to get the name right because it was Chiron and Novartis and may have an official name that's some combination of that right now. Uh, Chair Thompson, if I may just interject. Yep. Uh, commissioners really only need to disclose conflicts of interest and ex parte communications regarding items that are on tonight's agenda. Okay. And should I remember it for the day that it's on the agenda? Yes. Okay. Yes. Just checking. <laughs> I would say that since the only item on tonight's agenda has been continued, it's probably a safe bet that no one has had any ex parte communications. Yep. Okay. So we can move forward on the agenda. Um, as noted, the study session um, has been canceled for tonight, so we won't be undertaking that. Um, and uh, after that is planning commissioner's comments. Anyone, any, does any commissioner have a comment? I do. I just want to, um, just looking at the new faces on the teams here with the fellow commissioners. Um, uh, welcome aboard. Welcome to be, you know, even back to Deepak, you know, he's kind of new too as well, but mm -hmm. all you guys glad to, glad to see a really cool team pull together. Really nice. And I just second that to the uh, Commissioner Caffey, welcome. And again, farewell to Commissioner Donaldson and moving forward with fresh new faces and fresh new ideas. Yeah, I'd like to welcome uh, Commissioner Schaaf as well uh, and Commissioner Mendes. Uh, you know, I think you have been here for two or three months, but I look forward to working with all of you. And thank you uh, to Commissioner Donaldson for her excellent service over the last 14 years. 
thank you all again for the welcome. Really appreciate it and looking forward to it. Okay, and with that, um, it's a short meeting. So thank you everyone for being here. Um, I'm going to officially adjourn the meeting at 7.10 p.m. <laughs>